I'm Andrew Chamberlain, and this is my video demonstration of my final project for ECE 3710 at Utah State University. For this project, I decided to make a Morse code decoder because Morse code is something I've always wanted to learn, and I thought this project would help motivate me to learn more about it and eventually learn how to do Morse code. So before I show you the circuit, I want to show you a little bit about the state machine. That if I show you my code here, it's laid out quite simply. We have four states. We have the initial state, which is essentially just a navigation menu. We have decode, encode, and learn. Decode is going to take Morse code from the user and output English characters. Encode is going to do the exact opposite, taking the message currently stored and encoding it into Morse code. And the learning state is a bit of a game where the first line will be the message currently stored and the second line will be our input trying to copy the first line. That said, navigation is done with four buttons, which I can show you just over here. And currently we're sitting at the menu. Before we just jump in and start demonstrating, I want to show you a little bit more about Morse code. If we look here, it says, international Morse code has four simple rules. A dash is equal to three dots. One unwritten rule here is that a dot is the shortest time unit in Morse code and everything else is measured around it. The space between parts of the same letter is equal to one dot. The space between two letters is equal to three dots. And the space between two words is equal to seven dots. So the basic unit is a dot which if I give a single dot, it should output an E. Let's go ahead and test that. We'll go into the decode state to test this. If I press the blue button for input, it'll print an E. Okay, and then a dash, if I hold the button down for just a little while, it's a T. And as for the space in the middle, that means at least seven dots pass between when I put in the E and put in the T. So it decided that that must have been the end of a word and it put in a space for me. But what if I try and give something a little too long? What, what is a dot? What is a dash? It's kind of arbitrary. So let me show you what happens if we give a signal that's a bit too long. Suddenly it realizes, hey, this person's going slower than I expected. Let me slow down for them. And then it'll try and make a T out of it. If I go too fast, like let me try and do something like SOS super fast. It's going to say, wait, wait, wait. I need to speed up so I can keep up with you. And if I keep going at about that same pace, eventually it will keep up with me. Almost there. We'll keep trying until it catches up with me. Okay, this should be it. And notice how I had to pause to make sure each character showed up. That's because I, as a user, to follow the rules, have to actually pause the three dots, and that's how long it takes for the character to display. So before I move on, I want to quickly clear this um, by pressing the red button, and I guess I should also demonstrate the yellow button. The yellow button deletes a single character, so if I just have a few E's in a row here, I can press a yellow button and it'll just delete them one at a time, and the red button clears all of them. But I'm going to give a clean SOS so that we can go on. SOS is three dots, three dashes, three dots. There we go. And now I can leave this state. I'm gonna navigate over to the encode state. From the encode state, you'll notice it still displays the SOS message, but this time when we press the blue button, we'll be able to hear SOS. Okay. If that was a bit hard to understand, we can actually change the speed of it. So now this is at speed setting two. That was a good tempo. And then again, speed three, this is gonna be super fast. Interestingly enough, professional Morse coders can get as fast as or faster than 10 dots per second. Sadly, this button has a mechanical limitation that doesn't allow me to go that fast. If I try to go that fast, it'll just confuse dots for dashes and that is not worth anything. So some other features that I had talked about in my design were that when I pressed the blue button, I was wanting the buzzer to sound and an LED to blink. However, I found that the mechanical clicking sound of the button itself was sufficient feedback for the users. And the blinking LED is all the way over here, which if you notice is almost out of frame of my camera and also out of frame of paying attention to this. And so no user that I've seen use this would have even cared to look over here if there was a blinking LED or paid attention to it if it was blinking. So I chose to keep those two features out because they seemed unnecessary considering the clicking sound of the button alone 
was pretty sufficient feedback. Okay, from there we can move on and talk a little bit about the rest of the encoding state, which actually I need to go back to that. So yellow goes back to encoding. The last option, if you saw there, said green for terminal. So if I press green and encode, it's actually going to overwrite the message, and it's going to say reading input. This is useful because now we can come to my putty terminal, and without having to know any Morse code at all, I can give a message that I want to practice with or listen to. So I'm going to try this one-handed. I'm going to type out H, oh, H E L L O, and press Enter, and we should see it pop up over here. There we go. Oh, I accidentally typed an extra O. So let's try that one more time. It's hard to do this one-handed. H E L O O. Enter. There we go. Hello. Nice and clean. And then if we wanted to listen to that, we could come over here and press the blue button. Oh, wow, that was, that was hard to hear. Let's change the speed. I like speed too, that's my favorite. The very obvious part there was the three dashes at the end, which we know to be O from SOS. Okay, so our final state then is the learning state. In the learning state, we have the hint, we have a speed alteration, and we have green, and we have blue for input. Um, red returns us back to the menu. So here's the message hello again, and let's pretend I don't have a cheat sheet and I have no idea how to, how to do hello in Morse code. I can simply press the green button and listen. That sounded like four dots, so let's give it a try. H, which if we look here, H is indeed four dots. E we know to be one dot from before, and L, if we listen closely, that sounded like dot, dash, dot, dot, but maybe it was dash, dash, dot, dot. Let's try dash, dash, dot, dot first and see if we get it right. Nothing printed. So let's try dot, dash, dot, dot. It printed the L. If we double check our answer, L is indeed dot, dash, dot, dot. So my second attempt was correct, and that's why it printed the character. Same as before, if I hold down this button for too long, it'll recognize that I'm going slower and slow down for me. Or if I press the button really, really fast for a little while and it gets confused, oop, I was going even faster than it can keep up. It'll speed up and try and change. So now, me jiggling the button earlier is one of those mechanical limitations I was talking about. Okay, and now I have the proper message, hello. And that's it for the main features. I can show you a little bit more of my code. Um, in my project design, I included all of these features, and about the only ones I chose not to implement were indeed the buzzer and the LED, because they just weren't clean for the user. You can see here, this is where it displays the speeding up. It checks it by using this under or over parameter, as described in the check input. If I have a dash, that's longer than a double dash, or if I go over three time units more than a dash, and that means I essentially held it down for twice as long as I needed to, and that's what tells it to, to go slower. And then the under part down here says, if I underperform, if I'm going too fast, right, I don't give it enough time, then it's gonna try and speed up by reducing the time unit of a dot. The LCD controls are all very straightforward. They're from a previous lab. The Morse code is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So in the Morse code, I used a try data structure stored as a string. And then I used simple pointer arithmetic to navigate it for a dot is here and for a dash is here. You can see a little bit in here. Here's where it calculates the over. So this is me counting past three time units and then it calculates the under in the return statement. And then down here, we have some of the encode message. So that's all for my project. Thank you so much.